I'm Tim Gutarmson, the seed physiologist here at Sodak Labs. And today we're going to talk a little bit about fusarium in wheat or cereal germination tests. So what we have here is, uh, you know, three different germination methods on wheat. First we have a sand test, and these are seven-day-old seedlings in sand. And the one thing that sand does is you get very uniform water uptake, because this is the same sample in sand versus just on the crepe cellulose. And you maybe can see more uniformity here because the water uptake is very uniform. And then the sands, because it blocks light and it also surrounds each seed, it tends to suppress any fusarium spread. So on the paper towel here, and this happens to be treated wheat, we only see this really one case of fusarium here. Now if I open the roll towel, and one of the things I saw right away on this roll towel, I'm, I'm seeing mycelium here on the roll towel, which isn't a good sign. I see some pink before I even open it, which is a symptom that it could have um, some fusarium in it. And when you look at this wheat, and it is untreated, we've got, you see the mycelium here? You've probably got um, 12 seeds right here. So, you know, in trying to sort off what you have, you know, you probably have some severely infected seeds, but you just have a mess. And this is one of the problems about getting an accurate test when you have fusarium present. You can see here, here's a, a, a dead seed with mycelium growing out of the embryo. You see some mycelium here. This is more of superficial infection on the seed coat. There's some browning. When you look at this ideal root situation, you know, you see nice white um, root development. Here on this seedling you see browning of the roots and that's because the mycelium is coming into contact and eventually it'll decay the shoot and the, and the roots and the analysts might call it an abnormal decayed seedling. But seed treatment over here cleans up that superficial or testing in sand really is not favorable to the fusarium. So we like to test in sand and then we also do a treated germ as a sidebar test. If the seeds are severely infected and dead, the seed treatment or the sand's not going to make that any better, but it will improve this superficial infection. Yeah. In our lab, when we do a sand test, we also give an average coleoptile height. And on wheat here, you can see the coleoptile, you know, this, it's probably about an inch long right here, you know, would be my guess. You know, the seeds may be a half inch under the sand. So possibly four, four or five centimeters long, the coleoptiles. The thing about the sand test, since you get such uniform water uptake, it's pretty easy to give an average here. You, and you know, you can see where they terminate. Where over here in, the, in just the um, towel test, we have seedlings sort of growing sideways and it's harder to get a, a measurement of the coleoptile length. You know, here we have one that's clear to here, so quite long. If you found a cultivar that had a very short coleoptile length, you wouldn't want a grower planting that um, too deep. So that's coleoptile length in wheat. Thanks for watching today. 
Um, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us at Sodak Labs.